In October 1972, my husband, our two babies, my brother and I left Leavenworth in our 1968 VW van on a camping trip to a recreational area in Arkansas called Beaver Lake. When we finally got there, we found a fairly remote campsite at the far end of the park. We wanted to be alone as the babies woke often during the night and needed to feed. We didn't want to disturb any other campers. Shortly, after pulling into our campsite, my brother pitched his tent next to the van. The rest of us were going to sleep in the van. The campsite was in an area with a horseshoe-shaped rocky terraced ledge that rose from around 50 feet to around 100 feet as it curved around behind the four campsites. Because of mature trees and thick brush, daylight had trouble poking into our spot. Fast forward to that night. Sometime around 3.30 a.m., I heard some animal sounds on the ridge that I thought were being made by coyotes. The babies were asleep, and all was quiet otherwise. I peered out the window, but couldn't see what was making the sounds, because it was so dark. Still hearing odd yips and howls, I laid back down on the back seat. Moments later, there was a huge crashing bang on the van wall, right next to my head. My husband leaped up, out of full sleep. My brother bolted out of his tent and jumped into the van with us. We were all in a panic, looking in every direction, trying to see what had hit the van like that. My brother finally yelled that he saw something moving behind the van. We all turned, just in time to see a large shadow moving about twenty feet behind the van, from left to right. After about twenty minutes had passed without any of us seeing movement out there, my husband and brother went out to inspect the van for damage, but found none. We then started hearing pounding steps coming from the brush about fifty feet behind us. The guys eased back into the front seat of the van. That's when my husband turned on the headlights and stepped on the brake pedal for the rear light. Instantly, there was a huge commotion. He started the engine, and that's when, in the glow from the headlights, we could see a hairy thing ten feet away and coming toward the van. As it got closer, its silver-tipped hairs glistened in the light. It had a grayish streak from its shoulders down its back to its buttocks. The creature was walking on two legs, was around seven or eight feet tall, and had a barrel chest and skinny legs. It never gave us a good view of its eyes, so I can't tell you what they looked like. I could see that the face was not ape-like. It was dog-like. Its ears had tufts of fur on top of them, and it was very human-like in its movements and general body structure. It moved smoothly and quickly, around to the back of the van where it followed the base of the ridge, away from us. That's when it let out a menacing huff and a low, rumbling growl, like a dog. Insanely, my husband and brother bolted from the van, trying to get a better look. That's when a shower of gravel came at us. My husband and brother tore back into the van and burned up the road, getting us out of there. I kept looking out the back window and they looked in the rearview mirrors, but none of us ever saw it again. It just didn't seem like a Sasquatch was what we had seen. It seemed too dog-like in its face and was too slim in its body. I still have PTSD-like feelings to this day due to that encounter. Before I say anything about my encounter, I just want to clarify that when I saw this thing, I went to Google and searched for what it was. I came across this website and found that another person in Jackson County had had an encounter with something like this. So I know I'm not crazy. I'd been studying wolves and their behavior for about three years before I had this encounter. And I know that considering Jackson County is about 656 square miles with a population of 674,158. And it is practically infested with wildlife such as deer, livestock, and predators such as coyotes and foxes. It wouldn't be likely for a large predator such as a wolf to be lurking in the sparse woodland. The average wolf territory is 13,2400 2, square miles, and it'd be easy for such a huge creature to live just in Jackson County alone. This may even be the very same dog-wolf-man thing that the other person saw. Anyway, on to the encounter. I was just chillin' on the laptop in the living room, watching people blow stuff up when I felt like I had to go to the bathroom. I set the laptop down and put my headphones on the keyboard and got out of the chair. Let me clarify, I'm not a bloody psychic or a medium or anything, but I have a sort of sixth sense where I can tell if something is watching me and I knew something was. We have a huge window on the wall just above the couch, and it was a particularly cold night. So the windows caught things like breath fairly well. I turned to the window thinking that whatever it was watching me from there, 
and I knew I'd see it if it was. We have motion-sensing floodlights, and it'd have to be either standing on something or tall as the devil himself in order to see into the window of our trailer. It was around six, eight feet off the ground, with the top of it being about eleven feet. I looked over to the window, and the only thing I could see was that the floodlights were on, and something seemed to duck under the window, like a kid playing hide-and-seek. I didn't think anything of it, considering our neighbors were sort of druggies and alcoholics, and often came to look in our windows, and every opening to the house was locked, so I had nothing to worry about. I went to the bathroom, and when I finished I washed my hands and went back to the laptop. I noticed that the floodlights went out, so whatever it was gone. Not thinking anything else of it, I went back to watching people blow stuff up. I should mention also that my eyes are sharp, sharp enough to spot a bird about 50 feet away in a tree, so it's no surprise that when the floodlights came back on, I noticed immediately. I glanced up from the screen, expecting a drunken or high idiot to be looking in with a stupid expression on his face, but I was frozen by what I saw. It was a huge, huge wolf that was looking at me with dirty, ambery yellow eyes. Its ears looked like they were torn or cropped or something, and the face looked sort of human-like. Not really a full human face, but more like the jawline looked very masculine and human compared to the rest of its face. Its lips were curled back, and it seemed as if it were snarling though I couldn't hear it if it was, and its breath caught on the cold glass. It was so tall that the top of its head was halfway up the window, and if I had to guess how wide it was, I'd probably say maybe the width of my shoulders. I knew that whatever it was, it most likely had wolfish instincts, so I did the only thing I knew to do, which was avoid eye contact and make myself look as small as I could whilst having my throat and underside showing. This is a very common submissive position, and although I was scared out of my mind, I knew that holding eye contact would make me seem like a challenger, and running would make me seem like prey. When I did the submissive position it must have worked for it to leave me alone because it just hit the window, which made the entire trailer shake, and it went away. I hadn't heard or seen anything else like it since, although I do hear the odd howl coming from the back roads. God help the poor idiot that decides to try and hunt this thing down. I can tell you now that whatever it was was not friendly because if it were, it wouldn't have slammed my window as hard as it had, and it would not have been growling like I'd taken its food. Although it practically did assault my window, I could understand why it was upset. I was on its territory after all, an intruder and possibly a threat to its existence and its prey. It's really just best to stay out of its way and respect it. After all, it is one of God's many strange creatures in the world. Before we continue, please subscribe to the channel, it is greatly appreciated. Since it was summer break from my school, I was lazily lounging at home watching TV. I got bored, so I went outside to see if I could do anything with my chickens, like feed them worms and snails. Before I go into more detail, I should explain the area I live in. My home is on the outskirts of the city I live in. I had about five or seven chickens at the time, and we hadn't expanded the coop so it was a small pen connecting two sides of the chicken coop, which is wooden and sturdy. The only ways to get into the coop is either through the trap door attached to the big door and the three windows. One window is on one side of the door and the second window on the other side. The third window is a large window. Keep in mind that they all have traps connected to them so they can be closed. We have seven acres of woodland that we call the back pasture, and if you've ever been back there you could see that it's a popular habitat for the local deer. There was also a wild boar that was roaming around at the time, and I don't know how it got there. We had been having trouble with poachers for a while, considering the population of deer in the woods. One poacher had set up a trail cam, one that was motion activated. There was an old rusty deer stand that had been put on a tree a long time ago, and the tree had begun to grow around it. Beyond our acres of woods, there's a large cornfield owned by our neighbors, and beyond that is a forest. I don't know what the forest is like beyond the field since we've never been there. I went outside to do something with my chickens and I brought along a bucket of corn for feeding the deer after. When I walked out of my home, I saw a doe sitting in the tall grass. I thought it was sleeping since it had its head down and wasn't moving. I, being the curious little nut I was, decided that I would sneak up on the deer and get a picture of it to show to my mother when she got home from work. I crept as silently as I could across the yard that separated me from the deer. I should also mention that we have a clearing with a burn pit in it that was filled with cedar branches. 
I was creeping across my yard towards the deer, and when I had cleared the burn pit and was about ten yards from it, I realized that the deer wasn't asleep, but it was dead. It was the most disgusting sight I had ever seen. Its intestines were completely gone, the flesh on the body of the doe shredded to pieces, and blood absolutely everywhere. It looked as if it had been sitting there for a while, and it smelled like it too. Most of the blood was dried, and the air reeked with the stench of rotting flesh, urine, and what seemed like a hint of wet dog. Something that creeped me out about the scene was, although it was a rotting carcass, there were no insects at all around it. It was as if the usual lively forest was deader than the deer. Not even the neighbor's cattle made a sound. It looked as if the poor deer had simply been left after being brutally attacked and half-eaten, which it most likely was. I left the bucket at the beginning of the trail, thinking that I would come out later with my mother and grain the deer when she got home. Then I started to walk back to my house. I had barely taken a few steps when I heard a low, snarling growl that sounded like a wolf, although it seemed distorted as if it were being played on an old radio. Sorry, that's the only way I think of describing it. Against my better judgment, I turned my head around, and I saw what looked like the biggest freaking wolf I'd ever seen. It was on all fours. Its fur was black and matted in places. Its face was what you'd expect a wolf to look like, although it was broad and the muzzle seemed a little short although the way it was curling its lips made it look as if its snout was plenty long and its eyes were yellow. Not a bright yellow like the yellow of a flower or the sun, but a dim, amber, red yellow, if that makes sense. Its ears looked like that of a Doberman pincer with the cropped effect. Its front legs were long, and it looked as if it were a bodybuilder. Its paws, if you can even call them paws, looked like huge hands with long claws at the end of them. It stood up, and I heard the most sickening popping sound you could ever imagine. It sounded like the sound of popping joints, but it seemed amplified as if it were being played through a microphone and the sound was coming out of loudspeakers. Its body looked like a bodybuilder's pumped up on steroids. It was so big. It had no tail, that I could tell, and it seemed to tower over me, although I was a good ten meters from it. I was about five foot four inches at the time, and I came nowhere close to its height. It was so tall that the tip of its ears could almost touch the top of a young cedar. It let out a loud howl, which sounded more like a roar, and it charged at me. Doing the only thing I knew to do while hyped up on fear and adrenaline, I began to run away from it. I remember clearing my yard in what seemed like hours, but was most likely only a few seconds, and running inside, slamming and locking all of the doors and windows. As I calmed down a small bit, I realized that if it had really wanted to kill me, that it would have that what I had experienced was not an attack charge, but a bluff. I was lucky to get away with my life. Although this happened almost two years ago, it still terrifies me to think about it. The deer was gone the next day, and ever since that evening I have been weary around the woods, only going in them in broad daylight, only when I absolutely had to, and never without a weapon. Sadly, I cannot say that I am one of those people that have stopped experiencing things after the encounter, although I only had nightmares for a month after that day in June. Nothing really started to happen again until about two months ago when I was staying up at night playing on the laptop. I started to hear things moving around on the porch and turned on the light to see the shape of something huge disappearing behind the corner of my house. There was also one of the rare times I went into the woods after the first encounter when I was helping my mother clear brush from the hunting clearing. I was going to get the mower and was walking the trail to do so when I heard bipedal footsteps following me off to my side. They stopped whenever I stopped and I eventually ran out of the woods, and I haven't been back since. I asked my late great-grandmother about the creature I had seen in the woods, and she informed me that there was something called the Wolfhead Man that stalked the Kanza tribe, preying on small children that strayed too far from their teepees. Later, I was informed by my history teacher that my house had actually been built on a tribal burial ground, and I have since been wondering if that had something to do with it. I hadn't heard about the Wolfhead Man before she told me about it, when I saw that there were several eyewitness reports that were proven to be truthful, it made me feel a lot better about coming out with this information. I had attempted to tell people previous to this submission, but everyone either said I was stupid, crazy, or just a plain liar. One thing's for certain. I am not stupid, I am not crazy, and I am most definitely not a liar. I know what I saw, and what I saw was a dogman. 